Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's a little bit earlier than what we usually film but yesterday we had thunderstorms and torrential rain and the same is forecast for later today. So we're going to pick the raspberries and the strawberries while we've got some sunshine because I don't really want the heavy rain smashing onto the especially the raspberries because they'll actually knock the ripe fruits onto the floor there's quite a few ready there is a little bit of slug damage on there I have put some organic slug pallets down I don't know whether it's having an effect but the organic slug pallets after you've had uh, say three or four rains they're washed away anyway so we'll pick what we've got and let you see them, okay? Now we've picked the raspberries that were ready and the strawberries that were ready. Nice little basket full, but if we left them and we got the torrential rain again, they'll do more damage. There's quite a few left on yet. I have lost a few more strawberries with the slugs and one or two's got mildew. But weather like this, you expect that. We can live with that. We're getting quite enough for us, so quite happy. Now tomorrow we'll probably pop back down with the camera and I need to tie the raspberries up. These are the late raspberries, so they all need tying in, ready for cropping. The other thing I need to make you aware of is that all this heavy weather and rain this morning when I came down the garden you couldn't actually see one end to the other with the mist this is blight weather do beware that blight is about when this weather's as heavy as this I do believe we've had the last three days have been blight warnings that it's in the area so keep an eye out for it hello we're back in Inside the fruit cage again after our little harvest we've had quite a bit of rain and a little bit of sunshine not a lot but we've come out today as you can see that we've picked over the raspberries but the next pick is now ready so we'll pick those later today as well the nice size of berry on that one I'm quite pleased with it now the strawberries are about the same as well. They'll need another quick pick over later today. But first off, we're going to do that little job we talked about was tying these raspberry canes up. Now these are primer canes. That means that they flower and fruit on the current year's growth. And at the end of the season, you cut them down again and then grow up next year. They will need tying in as you can imagine a bit of weight on these they'll just fall flat so I just tie them in I don't make a big job of tying them in because in a few weeks when we've harvested we'll have to cut it all down again so you just tie it up loosely but firmly so they don't flop over so what I do I'm using Phyllis string and then it's not expensive about if you take about a metre or a yard, if you like, three feet, that's enough to coat with each time. And then I just cut it off. Quite simple, I just tie them on, tie the string on, and then just take them round and keep going round the wire. Can you see, look, keep go round the wire. And then as I go the other side, I pick that one up and come back. So it keeps them, keeps them tucked in nice and tight. Again, I'll push that one. That one will push forward. Round the wire. Then I go that way, pick that one up and come back in. Now, I can go one more on that one. So take that round the wire then round the cane and we'll tie that one off
Now when these get above this piece of timber at the top I shall take the tops out and that will make the cane side shoot more so we get a better crop on it like we did on the other ones over there which we'll show you in a moment so I'll cut another piece I'll get these finished and show you the more tidy right just tying the last one in now here it is look. just tie it on it's not doesn't have to be tight And we just put a double double knot in just to stop it from slipping out. Now these now smaller they... ones that are coming off the sides, what I'll do is I'll just push those through and put them behind the wire and bring them back. They're a bit whippy, they're not strong canes at all. There you are. Look. They'll just hold in. As you can see, we've got some runners coming off and a weed, which I shall remove as I see them. What I shall do is I'll dig those up and I'll pop them. And then when we set up again, I'll fill some of the gaps in with them. The canes that we lost and replaced still haven't done awfully well. These are the canes we replaced and they're still not doing awfully well. There's a couple okay, so what I should do is dig these up, pop them off and then plant them in that gap. When we get to the next wire, which is here, I should do exactly the same again and then top off above the rail. As I go past, I'll just show you my uh, bean. This, this is an exceptionally good bean it is actually a dwarf like the rest that was in the packet but it's grown up here so there's somebody in packaging have got themselves mixed up somewhere what I should do is I'll do it now I just knit the top of that out I don't want it any bigger than that and then it'll break again and come up it would be interesting to see what variety we've got mixed in with the dwarf. Little bit of slug damage on the beans, but I've got some organic slug pellets. I'll have to put a few either side. I've also got quite a bit of coffee grounds this week, so I might just put the coffee grounds each side instead. While I was tying in, I noticed we got... I can't find one to show you now. I did see a little bit of aphid on them, so this week when I spray, I'll do the whole lot. I use an organic spray, it'll just, I think there's more soap in it than anything else, but it's, uh, it just keeps the aphid in check. But likewise, I've seen some still on the berries, so they won't do it as well. There we are, I've just raked it through with a four prong just to tidy it up and took some of the weeds out. Now we've had some rain and it's warming the ground again, we'll get a lot of weeds coming up, so I'll have to keep in touch with that and keep those weeds down, keep the hoe going. Now these floricanes will produce growth this year that will fruit next year. So just when you're picking and harvesting and then eventually cutting these off, do beware of these big growths that are coming up. These are next year's fruiting canes. If you remember, we'll tie them in at the end of the season and bend them over. Then next spring, we'll just knit the tops out and that's what gets you all this extra growth here that carries the crop. As you can see, the raspberry beetle trap is still up. I'm afraid there's nothing in it, so I can't show you what the beetle looks like yet. We will catch one eventually. Right, now we'll go down and have a look at the garlic and see if we can lift one or two and have a look what condition they're in after a very wet spring. It'll be interesting to see the condition of the bulbs. But while we're passing the potatoes, they're standing well, they look a good colour, quite pleased with them. But we've had 
nearly uh, five blight warnings in the last five days. I've had no blight problems, but I have had a bit of black leg problem. That's you'll know when you've got black leg because the one stem of the potato will suddenly start collapsing. Then what I do is I get the knife and I go right underground and cut that stem out and take it down and burn it. I've had two, two gone down, which is negotiable, that's fine with all this wet weather. Now the rest are standing quite well, I'm quite pleased with them. I will ridge again now that the rain has washed all the soil down the ridges. I just hope we don't get too much uh, heavy storms on them. Now when it's wet and warm and humid, that's when you'll get your blight. So just beware. Keep looking at the leaves, watch out for the little yellow spots coming under the leaves and then it eats its way through the leaf. And if you've got your blight, you need to cut that plant completely off as soon as you can and burn it. Hopefully, if we can keep going for a few more weeks, the potatoes underneath will swell up a little. So if you have, do get it and you cut them off and the potatoes have swelled a little, at least there'll be a crop. At this time of year, there's nothing there. So if we get it now, we've lost the whole crop. Now the tomatoes have suffered badly with this cold and wet and windy weather. They are beginning to pick up. I did give them a feed yesterday and we'll see how we can we'll see how they go one or two of the leaves have been knocked about and they're dying so i shall have to take those off the strange thing is that the roma which are the plum tomatoes seem to have taken it better than all the other hybrids now the onions are standing well but i've left that one in to show you can you see where it's dying it's turning yellow that is the second one I've had like that now obviously I put that down to this horrible damp wet weather but that will have to be removed and destroyed straight away and it's also the longest day today and your onions will now start to swell so we've got to look after them now if it really gets dry if it ever gets dry and really starts cracking the soil we need to water them but it's just a case keep the weeds down let them mature and they'll be fine but if you've got one that's turning yellow like that one get it out you don't want that in your soil because it might start spreading from onion to onion so as soon as you see them out there this is the garlic patch what we'll do, we'll lift, we'll lift these three at this end and see what sort of condition the garlic is in with such a wet spring, okay? Let's start at that end, it might be easier. Oh, it's strong old land this is. Come on then, let's have a look at you. There you are then, that's perfect. It's got, that's a good garlic, it's got nice fat cloves on it and it's nice and moist and there's no white on it which is the, the fungus that gets on them. Let's see what else we've got then. I'm using the post hole spade, I find it easier. Is it quite it's quite well in? I don't want to grab it and pull it, so I break it off. I've got the that's it, and just shake the roots away if you can. And that's another one. That's fine, not perfect. I'm so happy with those. Diane will be happy with those because she's got garlic this year. 
There we go then. Order him. There it is, there it comes. Again, don't don't grab them and pull whatever you do. Get under them and take the take the root with it. That's fantastic, that's brilliant. To say these have been flooded about four times. I think these have been underwater this deep and they've come through beautiful. The variety was Marco and these are the clothes that we saved from year to year. We'll do the same again this year. Pick a nice big fat one with no disease on it and we'll say that one is for seed and then we'll dry it out, store it and reset it again in the autumn. Right, so I'll dig the rest up, providing it doesn't rain, and show you the crop. Now, that's the garlic lifted. Very nice, not a single one with any mildew on it. I'm so pleased. The ones at the far end are obviously a different variety. Now, the ones at the far end are white, they're a different variety. When I was digging this spring, I came across a garlic bulb that had been left behind from, well it must have been from three years ago because there's been no garlic in here for three years, at the corner. So I dug it up, split it and planted those and they're the white ones at the far end. But they've done well. But not bad to say they've been under water. I'm so pleased with that crop. It's made my day. What I should do with the garlic now is we'll finish filming obviously and then I'm going to take it up and put it in the shed near the door where there's plenty of air because of this wet weather we've got between now and the weekend then next week I'm sure the weather's going to change and then they can go outside to dry in the sunshine. They need sunshine to mature. So, but I don't want them wet through again. So I'll put them in the shed and then when the, finally the sunshine does come, I'll pop them out. There's the onion that didn't look very well. I think you'll find that's neck rot because that neck to the top of the onion feels very soft. It should be firm, but that's not. So I'll take this to the incinerator, get my hands clean. Now, for those lucky people who are like me and got heavy clay, all this rain we've had has really pounded the top of the soil and if I leave it it will dry out and it will crack and then if any more rain does come or other I want to water it you have quite a job to get the water through so if I just show you what it's like now and then what I do with the rake the four prong rake to open it up as you can see the rain has really pounded the soil down washed the stones by the way and then that will set solid and then you can see the clay lumps in it there look i don't know if you can see but it's beginning to cap already and crack open it's uh, it's quite a problem what i do is i use this four prong rake and i loosen it up and then it stays it stops it from capping if you like all i do literally just break that top up this is the last bit but using the rake if can you see these weeds here while you're raking turn the rake on the side and just push it through them and that does the weeding as well it's a very useful piece of equipment. There's no need to go too deep. 
because once you break the top it'll stop that panning and then next time I do it I can go a little bit deeper every time and it also breaks the lumps up a little while you're doing it. I, I normally do this at least once a week it does keep the weeds down as well but looking at it it looks better for being raked with the four prong rate and as I said it lets the air in and lets any light shower all go straight in instead of just sitting on the top it looks better as well I've had to put some corn down for the wrecking crew because they and now they're falling out as well so they keep quiet while we do this last bit but I don't think it's going to work now these are what we'll be setting next week the Bellis, the Panze and the Sweet William we'll be putting those in next week because we'll use those in the winter displays now for the veg garden we've got uh, cabbage, mini coal, sienna and tundra that will be the autumn cabbages and the winter cabbages to take us through the winter cabbage wise hopefully we'll have some cauliflower winter cauliflower as well to put in some swede and some turnip now what i'm thinking where we've just lifted those garlic i might just replen that bed up and put these in but I will have to put a insect mesh over them as well but that will be fine now that will be it for this week I'm so pleased with that garlic crop it's been under water and it's been bothering me ever since but that's good it's come up good I'm well pleased thank you for watching many many thanks for subscribing we do appreciate it and we'll see you next week when we have quite a bit of harvesting to do again and also we need to get those uh, flower seed in ready for use this winter in the winter troughs and baskets so hopefully we'll see you next week take care everyone bye now <laughs>